Go Inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. Tider Insider TV, brought to you by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. And good evening, everybody, and welcome into another edition of Tider Insider Television, brought to you by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. Don Staley and his group do an incredible job, and we're proud to be drinking uh, out of these beautiful Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports tumblers tonight. They do so much for our community, and uh, glad to have them on board here on TITV. All right, alongside Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Some huge news from college football in the last few days. The college football playoff management committee will consider a proposal to expand to a 12-team format possibly as early as 2023. This marks the first step in what could be a huge change to the sport's postseason setup. The proposal calls for the bracket to include the sixth highest ranked conference champions and the six remaining highest ranked teams as determined by the CFP selection committee. The proposal states that no conference would qualify automatically and there would be no limit on the number of participants from a particular conference. That might be good news for the SEC. And listen to this. Expanding the college football playoff to 12 teams could increase the average annual value by a lot. Right now, the 14 playoff, the value is about $600 million. The 12 team proposal could be worth more than $2 billion. That's according to a projection provided to USA Today by a firm specializing in college and professional sports rights evaluations and values. So the proposed 12 team format, Rodney, I was for an 18 you know, format if they were going to expand. Um, Four top-rated conference champions will get a bye. Five through 12 will be matched together, played at the home field of the higher-ranked team. The quarterfinals and semifinals will be played in bowl games, and the national championship game would remain at a neutral site. You already see Alabama and other teams adding Power 5 opponents to future schedules. Uh, before we get to the, the Tide's future schedules and how they're going to look, just your thoughts on this. At the, at the end of the day, I, I told you the real reason. It's that money. Mm -hmm. Chance to increase the value of the playoff to $2 billion. But... Your thoughts on 12 teams. That seems a little diluted to me. I would have rather had eight, but it will open up opportunities for a lot of different teams, including those not in the Power Five. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I kind of felt like the number was eight, but, uh, you know, if it's 12, it's 12. Listen, you know, Gary, I've talked to a – I really don't know the whole deal thoroughly, but I will say this, talking to a lot of people around college football, they felt like that, listen, you know, it's become Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, Oklahoma. Okay, and, and really for a shot in the arm for all of college football, you want to try to get everyone involved because you, you look at the Pac-12. I, I, they had, have they had a representative yet uh, in, in the playoffs? Uh, so to be able to maybe grow that opportunity for some of these other programs, I think it probably is good for college football. There's, a, there's some negatives too. We don't have time to go into all of it, but uh, overall it's probably a positive for college football. And for Alabama, as we said, future schedules were already being beefed up. This could be big. As we look at, at some of the opponents coming up for Alabama in the next you know, 10 years plus, it's impressive. But if you're going to have 12 teams, uh, strength of schedule will be important. Let's say Alabama has one of those years where they, they drop a couple of games. Um, they're still more than likely. I can't imagine a scenario right now where they're not in the top 12 teams. But beefing up your non-conference schedule is probably a good thing with this playoff opening up the way that it is. Yeah, I was thinking the only uh, season I remember, I guess 2019, what, they finished 10, 11? Yeah. Whatever it was. So that would have been the only season, and that was the worst season uh, Alabama had. And they had. would have been in. Yeah, then. they would have been in. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think uh, when you look at Alabama where they are right now, it's, it's, it's going to – Again, it'll open the door for a lot of other teams. You look at Georgia, for example. That's a team that's been a real quality mm -hmm. team, Gary. They've been in one, no no time since 2017, one time overall, but none since 2017. They, they've had some quality teams. I want to ask you a couple more questions tied into one, though, before we move on to Coach Talk. There is a chance that some teams could play as many as 17 games, which I think, quite frankly, is too many. Also, you one of the top four teams, yes, you get the bye. But you don't have an opportunity for a home game in the playoff uh, the way that some of those teams would that play in the first round. Four of those teams would play at home. You're talking about a lot of travel for fans if they want to follow all these games. So there are some issues to me 
uh, the number of games potentially, and also just the lack of home games for those top four seeds yeah, in the playoffs. Yeah, that is something that I think certainly has been mentioned quite a bit, Gary, is that what you're talking about there in terms of the locations of the games, the sites. And, you know, you would think that maybe some of these higher ranked teams would have more opportunities in having them at home. You know, I think the crowds, uh, that's going to be something that will be really interesting watching the track. Yeah, see if they, and see if they tweak this thing uh, as they go forward. All right, now it's time for Coach Talk. Back in the spring following Alabama's uh, spring practices, Crimson Tide head football coach Nick Saban was asked about the potential of expanding the college football playoff at that time. The impact on college football postseason bowl games is not the only thing that he and other coaches want taken into consideration by the college football playoff management committee. But I know there's a lot of interest in the playoff, but the other thing that I would be concerned about is, you know, how many games should we really play? Uh, I mean, the SEC championship game, to me, if you look at all the years we played in, most of those games were playoff games. We were playing somebody in the top five um, and uh, had, had an impact on who got into playoffs, who got in the championship game. So you're going to eliminate that so you can have more playoff games or we're going to play less games in a regular season so we can have more playoff games. Uh, I think there's only so many games in these guys. That he is so astute. Uh like we were talking about. I think Coach Saban, one reason he's been so successful is he always is able to see the big picture. Mm. Uh, he always is able to see it from Alabama's perspective, but the bigger college football perspective. And the guy is, is not only arguably the greatest coach ever, I think that his, his, the way he views the game, I think he's always looking out at it from everybody's perspective, not just from the Power Fives or Alabama's perspective, but what makes the game better overall. And that's one thing I really appreciate about him. Yeah, and another thing too, Gary, whatever the situation is, uh, the, the great thing about Nick Saban is the adjustments mm -hmm. that he makes to whatever the situation is. We've talked about the playoffs, however they might be uh, tweaked in terms of the expansion, NIL, a lot of discussion about that, the transfer portal, all of these things. Uh, again, I think right now in college football, the thing about you're not just a head coach anymore. You're a manager. That's right. You're managing a program, yeah. various aspects. Yeah, CEO, really, yeah. of a multi-million dollar business, that's for sure. Well, you can add another punter into the mix for Alabama in the fall, and he's an international player. James Burnup of Mount Macedon, Victoria, Australia, announced via Twitter on Sunday night his commitment to the Crimson Tide. He'll enroll in time for the 2021 season. 6'6", 215 pounds. Kind of reminds you physically of J.K. Scott. Burnup was originally committed to Ole Miss. He has trained extensively with Pro Kick Australia that has produced several Division I punters. He joins a position group that includes Ty Pirine, Sam Johnson, and Troy transfer Jack Martin. Ronnie, let's, let's be honest. Um, you know, you can overlook the kicking game unless it's not good. And punting is an area, even last year in a perfect season, where Alabama could have been better. And they're going to have a lot of competition. Whoever wins that job, you have to feel good about the fact that they got to beat out three other guys. Yeah, there's a, there's a a lot of challengers for sure. Now, listen, the one thing about uh, James Burnup that I think is really interesting, Gary, he's never kicked in a game in his life. Nope. He's trained in a program over there in Australia that develops kickers, plays kickers, punters, and all of that. They do an extremely good job. They've got a great track record, so he won't be the first one to do that. But can you imagine having never kicked in a game and Run then all of a sudden you kick in front of Brian Denny <laughs> Stadium against Auburn? I mean, what an amazing uh, – Challenge that would be. Yeah, but four good candidates for that punting job. Of course, Will Rockard's uh, got the place-kicking job. Uh, it's pretty much his. All right, let's talk track and field. All eyes were on senior Robert Dunning competing for an NCAA championship in the 110-meter hurdles out in Eugene, Oregon, looking for a bit of redemption from a not-so-great performance in his semifinal heat the day before. Right away, though, he, he was off the block with a great start, and Dunning took control of the race until the very end, running a 13.25 and bettering the field by more than a tenth of a second while running into a headwind. Dunning's time was just 100th shy uh, the school record that he set two weeks ago in the NCAA prelims, and it was the fastest time in meet history going into a headwind. Dunning is now the first member of the Crimson Tide's men program to win an NCAA, outda NCAA outdoor title since 2014. I can't describe it right now. The feeling probably going to hit me later on, but I was praying. I prayed this morning when I woke up cause for this opportunity. So I know um, in the semifinal, I, had, I didn't even warm up that whole day because my nose was bleeding all day. But I'm just thankful I got through and I'm able to win it right here.
Way to go, man. And the Crimson Tide women finished fourth overall at the NCAA Outdoors with a team total of 31 points. That's phenomenal. That was their highest place uh, finish since uh, 1986 and 1987 when they finished second back-to-back. -back. Way to go, Alabama track under Dan Waters. Men and women doing some great things this season. Well, still to come on Tider Insider Television, former Alabama linebacker Eric Anders opens up about his path to the UFC octagon. It's been an interesting one. That's coming up. And softball's Montana Fouts adds another award to her trophy case. More on this story. And we're going to be getting to your phone calls, emails, and tweets. As always, 205-348-WVUA, 348-9882. Go ahead and give us a call. We'll be right back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide, Tider Insider Television. Man, I did everything under the sun. You know, I was a janitor. I cleaned apartments. Uh, clean factories, uh, works for Coca-Cola, all in the same town that just a year before I had won a national championship. So, you know, I just was super frustrated and uh, just found myself being angry all the time because this is not how I envisioned uh, my life turning out, you know. Strong words. Welcome back to TITV, sponsored by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. Alongside Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. That was Eric Anders before his bout with Darren Stewart at UFC 263 this past weekend in Arizona. The Birmingham resident and former Alabama linebacker took on Stewart in a light heavyweight rematch in the UFC 263 prelim Saturday night in Glendale, Arizona. Anders won the rematch by unanimous decision, moving his overall record 14-5. This victory was huge for Eric in many ways. As he said, his path to get to this moment has been very untraditional. He's gone from being a star football player and national champion at Alabama to working multiple odd jobs, Rodney. And, you know, that happens sometimes with these players. We've talked about it. A lot of these guys, they play college football, and they're intent on getting to the NFL. And when that doesn't happen, not all of them have a plan. I'm glad to see that he, you know, he kept himself busy doing whatever he had to do to make a living. And then he found his calling here with uh, Mixed Martial Arts, and he's doing very, very well. You know, Eric Anders has always been an overcomer. I remember when he was in high school, he was a late signee with Alabama. Didn't sign until July mm -hmm. under Mike Shula. He was a 215-pound defensive lineman in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, Alabama staff got tipped off by him by a connection out there. Mm -hmm. They took him late. He came here. A lot of people said, you know, how's this guy going to ever develop? And then Nick Saban comes, makes him a jack linebacker. And then he makes one of the greatest plays in Alabama history. When Game he saving. Yep, strips uh, uh, Garrett Gilbert of Texas. And, of course, you know, uh, uh, number 41 picked it up. Uh, Courtney Upshaw. Courtney Upshaw picked it up. And, uh, the rest is history. Ingram scored a couple plays later. <laughs> and they were yeah. hoisting that yeah. trophy. Yeah. But Eric Anders, yeah, he really has uh, has his head on right. He's a, he's a husband and, and a dad of two children. And, hey, listen, in UFC, he is a rising star. All right, Alabama junior softball pitcher Montana Fouts has been named the 2021 Shut Sports NFCA Division I Pitcher of the Year. Fouts, unanimous first team NFCA All-American, went 27-4 this season with a 1.61 ERA. And she led all pitchers with 349 strikeouts, the third highest total in Alabama single season history. She threw double-digit strikeouts in 22 games, including 14 in a perfect game against UCLA at the Women's College World Series. She was named the SEC Co-Pitcher of the Year and SEC Tournament MVP, leading the Crimson Tide to its sixth tournament championship. She's special. Alabama softball news of another variety. The Tide senior outfielder KB Sides entered the transfer portal. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, she will have one remaining year of eligibility. Over the last four seasons, the Dora Alabama product played in 184 games. In 2021, she made 47 starts and batted 314 with 20 runs batted in even though she's a senior like all the players she got that extra year due to COVID she was a good player at Alabama wish her well on her next stop well coming up on TITV Alabama basketball player James Rojas suffers a major offseason injury we'll give you the details and talk about his recovery timeline that's coming up next and we'll be welcoming your phone calls emails and tweets again the information there on the screen 205-348-9882 you can email us at that address or you can tweet at us I'll have uh, Stu and Ariel looking for your tweets use that hashtag TITV so we can spot them we'll be right back with more Tider Insider TV after this. Bama men's basketball player James Rojas will reportedly miss the entire non-conference portion of the schedule after suffering a torn ACL. The 6'8", 220-pound forward underwent successful surgery. And Crimson Tide head coach Nate Oates believes Rojas will be back for the SEC portion of the schedule. Last season, Rojas appeared in 30 games and was a crucial player, player during the NCAA tournament run. Uh, he's a hardworking, tough guy, and good to hear that he'll be back. He tore one ACL last year, 
And now he's in, or in 2019, and now he's torn the other one. But uh, when you got Lyle Kane working on you at the Andrews Institute, you got the best in the business, so he's going to be okay, and that's good. All right, time to take some phone calls and answer some emails. Let's head out on the uh, phone lines and welcome in our good pal Sammy, the tomato man up there in Walker County. What's up, Sammy? Hey, Gary. Uh, Rodney, uh, great job. And uh, my question is uh, strength, condition, off-season program. I think it's so important, whether it be stamina, strength, quickness, agility, flexibility. I know they got it all covered down there. I just wish we knew more and more about it because it's so, so very important. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Sammy, listen, it's changed. I mean, it's changed a lot. When you look at what they do now versus what they did, I mean, there's such a scientific approach with uh, David Ballou and Dr. Matt Ray. It's just a lot different. And that's not saying anything bad about Scott Cochran. It's just changed, Gary. I mean, yeah. things evolve. And, uh, you know, the thing that I really like about the way they do it now, you know, Gary, a lot of times you would see in the past, and, and this is for years, you'd take the group of offensive linemen, basically did the same workout. Mm -hmm. this, these are individualized workouts. I mean, they've got it down literally to a sign knowing what each individual player needs to work on to improve things that are related to football, the strength, whatever it is, speed, those types of things. It's so scientific in the way uh, it's curtailed to each individual player. And I, I, listen, I think that really is one thing that sets Alabama apart right now from a lot of the other top programs in the country is this strength and conditioning program, the nutritional program that they have here. I mean, when you talk to a lot of these high school coaches, they rave about that. Great to call there, Sammy in Walker County. 205-348-9882. we got phone lines open right now. Let's get to an email, Rod. And this is from Hudson in Tuscaloosa. Will Bama baseball ever make it back to the College World Series? You know, Hudson, it's a fair question. When you haven't been in, in 22 years now, and gosh, if you told me in 1999 when Alabama was out there for the fourth time in five years or whatever it was, three and four years, that it'd be 2021 and we'd be waiting for them to go back, I would have told you you were crazy. I mean, Jim Wells had that program rolling, and, and there were several teams in the early 2000s that were good enough to go. You know, just didn't make it, like Arkansas this year. I remember 2002, Alabama was loaded, and they didn't make it. But uh, to answer your question, yeah, I think at some point they'll get back. I certainly don't want to make a prediction win. I mean, I've talked about it at nauseum, Rodney. It's, it's tough for Alabama and Auburn dealing with 11.7 scholarships. Um, that's a strict total. No lottery money to help with academic scholarships or, or, or money in that regard. So they're playing with a, with a short deck. Having said that, this is the University of Alabama, and the expectation is to some point get back to that World Series, and I do think they're going to make it. Mm -hmm. Was it, what, 96, 97, back-to-back, -back, yeah. went to the College World Series, the number one seed, and uh, yeah, it's, it's been a long time. But, I, hey, I, listen, I remember talking to Jim Wells. He brought up the same point you talked about, Gary, the 11.5 scholarships. You look at some of the other programs that have those advantages Advantages in the other states where they get uh, basically some more extra scholarships, yeah, some extra scholarships. Yeah. and I mean listen I can tell you this if it was Alabama football and they were being shortchanged <laughs> yeah, can you imagine the yeah, outrage never happened. but if you had some of these teams that had 95 and some had 85 nobody would stand for it but because it's baseball it's just looked over right. hey more phone calls and emails are on the way 205-348-9882 if you want to get through to us they tell me that phone lines are open that's a rarity so give us a call now we'll be right back with TITV on a Tuesday night here in T-Town. Stay with us. Congratulations to former Alabama men's golfer Lee Hodges, who has earned his PGA Tour card for next season after amassing more than 1,700 points on the Corn Ferry Tour. Uh, this is nice, and uh, that's, that's big time. But don't expect it to be the highlight of his week because he celebrated his 26th birthday this past Sunday and will be married so uh, this coming weekend. So, boy, he's got a lot going on. Congratulations to him. All right, uh, let's get back out to our phone lines. And Tubbs is with us here in Tuscaloosa. I don't think this is Tommy Tuberville. This is Tubbs in T-Town, not the senator. What's up, Tubbs? Uh, I'm doing good. Thomas, I think we all need to take a break and realize that money overwhelmed common sense. Uh, if we'd listen to Coach, uh, Division One football, and it sure you, you guys know that it's mean in the SEC. How much do you want to put uh, the athletes' bodies? Uh, you, 
it, it don't make no sense. Yeah, Tubbs, uh, listen, we're, 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 we're with you. Uh, we said already I don't think they need to be playing 16 or 17 games. Heck, I think 15 is a stretch. Um, and I get it. Scholarships aren't worth anymore if you play 17 games. Even NIL not worth anymore. Uh, so I do think that's an issue. And how many games? And but you know, at the end of the day, it's not about common sense. It's about that two billion dollars. It's about money. And there's a lot of money to be made here in a time when college athletics, outside of outside of football and men's basketball with the NCAA tournament, most of these sports don't make money. They lose money. Uh, Tubbs, that's just the reality of it. So when you got a chance to generate this kind of Money, uh, this this playoff expansion is going to happen. Now, how, if they can tweak it, but, you know, I don't see them cutting any games out during the regular season. I don't see them cutting out these, these conference championship games. So, you know, there's a chance that some teams are going to be playing, like I said, 16, possibly even 17 games. So do you add scholarships? I would like to think that would be tossed about. Yeah. I'd like to think maybe you talk about going to 95 uh, and, and increasing the, the size of these rosters. But – that's something that, that is going to have to be kicked around, Tubbs. There's no doubt about it. But uh, it's, it's a tough call. But the playoff is coming now. It may be tweaked, but it's coming, and it's coming with 12 teams. All right, let's get to an email. And um, this is from Bradley in Tuscaloosa. Do you all think Josh Primo will come back? Primo, the freshman basketball player. Bradley, I don't know. Uh, I think he should. I don't think he's going to be a first-round draft pick. But he, he is in a situation, I think, where if he – gets a good enough report card from the NBA and feels like he can make a roster, he may go ahead and go. I hope he comes back, but I can't tell you. I think it's 50-50 in my uh, opinion. I, listen, I hope he comes. I'm with you, Gary. I do think it's probably 50-50, but certainly, uh, listen, if, if he came back next year, he could be really good. He could be really good. All right, thanks for the phone calls and emails, and we'll be back with more TITV here. Boy, what a beautiful night. It's hot out there, but it's gorgeous here in T-Town, City of Champions. We're back after this. Well, Annika Zian is solid gold. The former Alabama adapted athlete won the 60-meter road race at the UCI Paracycling Road World Championships this past weekend in Portugal. And she wasn't done. After winning the 60-meter road race, she took silver in the individual time trial event and bronze in the team relay. Man, this Alabama adapted athletics program is one of the best in the country. And you see these athletes excelling once they leave UA. Congratulations to her. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Tider Insider TV, presented by Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sports. For Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget, if you missed any of tonight's show, you can catch a replay tonight after the news at 10 at 1030 on WVOA 23 or find it anytime at WVOA23.com. We're going to leave you tonight with new Tennessee Titans wide receiver Julio Jones taking part in Titans OTAs last week. Have a good night, everybody.